Hey everyone, in this short video I just want to go ahead and derive the aggregate production function, which is going to, going to be our model for the aggregate supply side of the economy, which means we're going to come back to it later on in the future when we do, go ahead and derive an aggregate supply curve. Alright, so to go ahead and derive it, you've got to remember that the aggregate production function is going to show the relationship between two things. Labor productivity, which is going to be y over l here on the vertical axis, and the capital labor ratio, which is on the horizontal axis. Assuming everything else you can possibly imagine about labor productivity, or everything else that you can imagine that affects labor productivity is held constant. So what does that mean? Well, from the earlier videos you know that the things that drive labor productivity are the capital labor ratio, technology, human capital, uh, the quality of government and social institutions, the weather, the climate, those types of things. We're imagining all that's held constant except for the capital labor ratio. Okay, So that's the thought experiment. We're going to trace out the effect on labor productivity of increases in the capital labor ratio assuming everything else is held constant. Okay, um, So before we begin to actually graph it out, I want to talk about something called diminishing marginal returns. This is going to be the key thing which determines the shape of the aggregate production function, diminishing marginal returns. And what this is going to be, oops, what this is going to be is this is simply something that says, turns, that as you add more and more um, capital goods, um, the output you get from each additional capital good is eventually going to decline, okay, or is going to get smaller and smaller. So it might help to have a concrete example to explain this. So think of a very, it's a, not, not the most exciting example, but it does convey the, the basic point quite well. Think of digging ditches, right? Now imagine that we want to know how many ditches a day or ditches an hour that uh, workers can dig, and we're going to hold everything constant except the amount of capital goods that these workers have. Now the technology we're going to use to dig ditches is going to be shovels, so we're going to keep the technology constant as shovels. The quality of the environment and the social and government institutions and all that stuff is going to be constant. So we'll just say this is a fairly rocky soil, so you can't dig many, if any, ditches per hour by hand. Um, the workers are all of a certain skill, they're you know certain education level, etc. So all that stuff's going to be constant. The only thing that's going to vary in this example is how many shovels that these workers have, and we're going to fix the number of workers at three. Could be any number, but I'm just going to go with three to keep life simple. Now, imagine how many ditches and how are these workers are going to, going to be able to dig if they have no shovels. In other words, no capital goods whatsoever. Well, with fairly rocky soil, they're probably not going to dig any ditches an hour. So their you know, labor productivity is essentially going to, going to be zero. It's going to be down there. Now imagine what happens if you give them one shovel to share. Well, if you think about it, that shovel is going to be in constant use, so you're going to get a lot of extra output from that shovel. Okay, why is the shovel going to be in constant use? It's because one worker can go ahead and uh, dig a ditch with the shovel. When that worker gets tired, he or she can hand it off to the next worker who can go ahead and dig a ditch, dig ditches until they get tired, and then when they get tired, they can hand it off to um, the third worker who can then start digging until he or she gets tired. So if you think about it, each one of, or excuse me, that initial shovel will be in constant use. There will always be a worker using it, while there will always be two workers resting. And maybe they're doing something else around the site, like removing the dirt or something like that by their hand or something along those lines. So the key point is that first shovel um, is in constant use, so it's going to get a lot of extra output, or a lot of output from, from it. Right. Well, what happens if you add a second shovel? Okay, well, if that's the case, then the second shovel is going to get you more output, but maybe not as much as you did before. Okay, why is that? Well, when you add the second shovel, now you're going to have two workers digging at the same time. But if they're digging in exactly the same location, they're probably going to be slowing each other a little down a little bit because they'll all be getting in each other's way. So that second shovel is not going to get uh, add as much to output as the first shovel. Then if you add a third shovel, so you go from uh, two to three 
shovels for these workers, then all three workers are going to be digging shovels at the same time. And so if you're in one small location, then you really are going to be bumping each in, into each other and slowing each other down. And so that third shovel is not going to add as much to output as either the first or the second shovel. And then finally, if you add a fourth shovel, then that fourth shovel really doesn't add anything extra to output because it's just sitting there, you know, unused because you only have three workers. Uh, and, you know, maybe a shovel breaks, and so it's nice to have an extra shovel hanging around, but that shovel in and of itself doesn't add a heck of a lot to output. Well, that's the basic idea behind diminishing marginal returns. If you hold all the other inputs constant, as you increase the capital labor ratio, labor productivity increases, but it increases by smaller and smaller amounts. First shovel increased output a lot, second shovel increased it by just a little, third shovel increased it by a little less, and the fourth shovel almost not at all. Okay, well let's try to use that basic intuition to try to drive what the aggregate production function is going to look like. Well, here you are at zero shovels, and then you add a shovel, and so the capital labor ratio increases to KL1, and you get a big jump in output. And so labor productivity rose all the way up to here. All right, then let's suppose for the sake of argument that you added another shovel, and so capital labor ratio increased again. But now this shovel didn't give you as much extra output because, you know, when you have two shovels, two workers digging, they start getting to each other's way. So let's say labor productivity increased to this point. And when you added a third shovel, Capital labor ratio rose to here, but labor productivity increased again, but not as much as it did before. So let's go ahead and say it rose to this point. And let me erase some stuff to give myself some room. And erase that. And so if you take a look at it, as the capital labor ratio is increasing by a constant amount, you know, from 0 to KL1, KL1 to KL2, KL2 to KL3, those are supposed to be equivalent distances on the horizontal axis. Not quite, but they're supposed to be. Labor productivity increases initially by a lot, then by a little, and then by a little less. And if you were to go ahead and connect all the dots, you would get an aggregate production function that looks like this. And I'll just label this as PF. For production function. I'm going to erase the word diminishing marginal returns, but the reason why the aggregate production function has the slope that it does is due to the principle of diminishing marginal returns. Holding everything else constant, as you add more and more capital goods, um, you get less and less output from the additional capital, so the production function gets flatter and flatter and flatter, and in the extreme case, it'll be horizontal once the capital labor ratio hits infinity. Okay. So that's why the aggregate production function has the shape that it does. It's due to this principle of diminishing marginal returns. And if you ever need to understand the principle behind that, just think back to the ditch digging example. It's not, you know, in some sense, it's not um, the best example, but it does convey, it's a very simple example, but it does convey the, pr uh, the idea behind the principle of diminishing marginal returns quite well.